Welcome to the Puget Sound Underground Podcast. We are in studio today with Sean Tibbetts. He is a chef, a community activist, and a restaurant owner. Chef, how are you? Uh, thanks for having me, uh, James. Glad to be here. This is uh, this is great. Um, I'm doing fantastic. It's a fine Tuesday. I've got you make great coffee, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I can't complain. Life is good. You nice. Know. You know, it's going great. It's awesome. Now uh, we're just getting uh, Thanksgiving rolling. Have any big plans? Uh, I am going to feed about 300 people Whew. on Thursday. Um, got a bunch of the community together, and we're going to. Uh, Get to uh, one of my good friends, uh, Tim Timothy Hall's restaurant at Carnegie, where he loaned me his restaurant for uh, my holiday feeds. Nice. And gonna get there at three in the morning and fire it up and give some hope. That's fantastic, man. We'll definitely dive into that and a whole bunch of other things that you're you've got your hands into. You do quite a bit, uh, but let's start out at the very, very beginning. Where did Sean Tibbetts begin? Sean Tibbetts began. Oh, let's see, 1973. Nice. Uh, I was born in Nuremberg, Germany. I was a premature baby. Yeah. Uh, I was an incubator for the first six months of my life. Dang. Uh, made it back to the United States seven months later. Yep. Um, and from there, I lived in Spanaway, um, almost by Mountain Highway. Yeah. Lived out there uh, yep. with my mom. And um, from there, just moved and... Um, just moved around Tacoma. My mom and dad split up when I was two, so sure. really didn't have a father figure. So me, I had to focus, you know, on, well, my mom had to focus on me and my brother because, you know, uh, mom's love is right the most of any love in the world. But, yeah, you know, she raised me the best she could. Yeah, no, so. definitely. That's unfortunately a common story. Uh, what kind of kid were you? What kind of stuff were you into growing up? Well, when I was, uh, one of my biggest memories was in the fourth grade, um, I always inspired myself. I always got my heart rate up. I got excited about stuff. Um, I'm a child that has ADHD where I can't uh, read very well. I can't sit for too long. Sure. Um, and I have a mild form of autism. So in the fourth grade, I made it a, a um, challenge to use my memory a lot. So I memorized the whole Gettysburg Address. Wow. Um, and I said it in front of the whole class, fourth grade, um, at Fawcett Elementary. Word for word, didn't miss a beat. Holy crap. Um, the next year, it got a little more aggressive, my ADHD, so my mother um, tried to do her best to contain me and balance everybody's life, so I got put on Ritalin, oh. the uh, short-term um, uh, medicine that messes up right. your, you know. So after that, it all went up and down, up and down, up and down. Right. Uh, when I was 14, I moved out, you know, nothing against my mom or anything, I just... Couldn't stay on the Ritalin anymore. Yeah. I could not. Stuff messes you up. Man. Yeah, I wanted to find out who I was. Yeah. So um, by the age of 15, got a job, started working. Um, by the time I was 18, uh, met, a, met uh, my um, ex-wife, Amber, you know, one of the greatest women I've ever known. Um, anyways, by the age of 19, I took a job um, as a dishwasher. Um at a place called Tacoma Golf and Country Club. Mm -hmm. um, but before I took that job, high school, I did not finish. I got kicked out in the 10th grade. Uh, never went to culinary school because um, I couldn't function. I couldn't focus on what school had to offer. So right. I, again, back to, sorry to back up, but I went back to Tacoma Golf and Country Club. And the chef there took me under his wing, taught me everything there was to know about basic food, him and his staff, uh, great people there. Yeah. Um, told me sean don't ever work in one place too long or that's all you're going to know is is that style of cooking that style mm. of food and he says i want you to venture out you know um on your free time and learn how to do these other things that i can't teach you so yeah. while i was working at tacoma golf country club i got a job at denny's learn how to flip eggs so yeah. you know uh, that was one of the key uh, factors um to me learning food was um him teaching me to go other places to learn it because he didn't have the time which i understand but um, from there, I went to Stanley and Seaforts, um, and then I went to Ram International. Uh, then I just jumped around private jobs a lot, um, here and there, here and there. You know, by the time I'm 
32, I got divorced. You know, we all go through some huh. trials and tribulations yeah. of life. Yeah. And, um, moved to Oregon and couldn't get a job. The chef there at uh, the golf course wouldn't hire me. Um, I don't want to use the word overqualified, but <laughs> um, when it comes to food yeah. and attention to detail and organization, I'm, I'm very good at those certain things, um, which we'll cover later of how. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so I had to work at a job called ACS. Uh, it was a call center, and mm. I worked there for nine months, and yep. I had a blast, folks. I had a blast. I mean, you'd call up because your cell phone was broken. Right. And if I was to answer, oh, I would do uh, different languages. I oh would be gosh. in HR all the time. Yeah. I would tell the other person, hey, every time we talk, I want you to talk after I talk to confuse oh the gosh. customer. But that's that was my mindset. And it was, right. it was fun. But I look back and, you know, I'm sure, you know, my mentors that were – my teachers that were training me at the call center didn't like it, but of course, you know, I'm 32. I'm, I'm like, how, how else are you going to have fun in a call center? I've, I've played that game as like, well. And it's a miserable place. Oh, it is. It's like, Hey, you know, it's like, uh, let me round up Scoob in the gang and we can see if we can solve your text message <laughs> mystery. And the person you're like, hello, uh, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> but this is just me having fun. It's priceless. Yeah. Um, so I got, uh, I uh, miss my kids because I have two kids. You yeah. know, I have a yeah. uh, 25-year-old, you know, and I love them very much. And I have an 18-year-old daughter who I love very much, too. So I just miss being a part of their life. So sure. uh, moved back to Washington. First job I got was uh, the Green Turtle mm-hmm. uh, out in Gig Harbor. Worked yeah. there with uh, wonderful Sue Glenn, you know, a uh, great restaurant owner. She got talked into buying the Cliff House um, off of Guido. You know, Guido yeah. was uh, he's okay. He's okay. But something happened. Everything crumbled. And um, I left there. And then where did I go? I went to. I'm trying to think here where I went after that. It's been. I've worked. It's a in, lot of places. Just so you folks know, I've worked 40 jobs in 28 years. Wow. You know, my restaurant right now is the longest job I've ever had. Oh, wow. The longest ever. And I'm 46. That makes sense. That makes sense. You know, though. it's just because my mind doesn't stop, it keeps right. going, you know. Um, but that is a little bit about me and where I come from. I grew up poor all my life, grew up on welfare, um, which I'm proud, you know what I mean? Because I learned the value of, of things I'm not coming from, you know, and I know people that have money have values too, but I'm just saying for me, it was my, it it, it should have been that way that I should have grew up the way I did. And I'm proud of that. Yeah. You know, everybody has their way of growing up. If you come in with money, I'm proud of you. If you come with no money, I'm proud of you. You know, it's all equal, but just how you live everybody's yeah. talking about you know how i grew up people that grew up with no dad have no future well that's not right, right. that's not true yeah. you know and i know people are saying that and i'm not here to get into politics but right right i'm living proof of that yeah you know i mean look at you know i mean i'm i'm, I'm like you and everybody else you know we all have to start somewhere that's and right yeah where do we go after that yeah keep going that's right so pedal never gets pulled up it what does. an interesting way to start a culinary career though i mean to not have any classical training never gone to school but to have your very first mentor in that space be like, don't work here anymore. You need more variety, right. right? It's like traveling the world and just getting to see different cultures and different ideas. And you did that on a micro level. And I think a lot of that comes through in your restaurant now. I mean, your menu is crazy, man. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, but it's so it's so delicious. And if, if you've never been to Sean's restaurant, I mean, can you briefly explain? And maybe we'll have to pull up a picture of, of your <laughs> your kitchen but i mean how do you i mean your dishes are it looks like it comes from somebody who's very classically trained i mean it's very visual and then of course you dive into it and the flavors are out of control how do you do all of that with your tiny little kitchen i mean it's it couldn't be any bigger than my closet <laughs> well uh, a couple things that like i like i said prior is that uh, i was not it's not a disease it's a blessing to me is i have adhd and right. i have that mild form of autism which i've been diagnosed with is right. uh you know, I can see things in my mind before they even transpire of what I'm going to do. And I'm not saying that in a creepy way. I'm yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm no ghost I reader. Have premonitions. You know, yeah, I'm just right. a guy that has a vision. And, okay, I can do that. I can do that. I right. can do that. And then I, I, I think about it, think about it, think about it, and it, I figure it out. So um, one of the biggest challenges that I've ever had was opening this restaurant, you know, and I'm not saying that. Um, cause it's not easy, you know, it's, oh, yeah. it's truly a mental game. Um, so before I opened my restaurant, I worked at a place called 
Arista. It was a high-end Italian restaurant, downtown Puyallup. Yeah. Some of the best food I've ever had, nice. you know, and uh, Ben's a great chef, um, did the best he could, you know, and uh, unfortunately he uh, had to close. He mm-hmm. had some uh, things come through and it just wasn't setting right with him, so right. he moved on. So I was unemployed for the 39th time. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> and it's a pretty um, high number. <laughs> um, I started eating at a restaurant called Little Jerry's, which is uh, in my old neighborhood where I grew up. Was Fern Hill? It's my yeah. elementary school. I know I'm trying to don't want to be too long on the the podcast here, but I sure, went to sure. Fern Hill Elementary School yeah. right there. Uh, uh, one big skip, rock skip, and you're there. Yeah, um, and Baker Junior High. So um, Tony had the restaurant there. He was open for a couple months and. Um, where I'm at now, and he's uh, it was called uh, the Annex, a production of Little Jerry's, which that's a great name, sure. great model. Yeah. Um, but you know, Tony uh, is is a very amazing, great man, and uh, he knew he was stretching himself too thin trying to run both restaurants um, by himself. So, right. <coughs> I'm sorry, um, he offered it to me, and I took it in June 2016. I was like, yeah. Um, I'll uh, start saving money and uh, I'll uh, I'll open uh, this year. Let me uh, get some uh, ducks in a row and yeah. see what happens. So I worked two jobs for about seven months, raised um, uh, enough money to open the restaurant, and then I get a phone call December nineteenth, two thousand sixteen, saying that the Lord has taken my mom. Um, black ice got mm. her out in Shelton. Jeez. It's so terrible. devastating blow, you know, I don't have any backing. I don't have any loans. I'm right. not looking for, you know, any any help money-wise because yeah. I'm that guy if, you know, if I can't do it on my own, I'm not going to ask somebody to help me. Yeah. So yeah. told Tony, cancel the restaurant. I'm not going to open. Uh, I told him I'm taking all the money I have. I'm going to give my uh, mom the best uh, service his son can give his best friend and yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, shook hands and that was that. Yeah. Um, the dream was gone, but... Um, about three weeks later, I get a phone call from a friend of mine who also I went to Fern Hill School with and said, uh, hey, Sean, uh, it's Jeremy. Hey, uh, sorry about your mom. And uh, how much would it have cost you to open that little cafe? And I'm like, uh, no, no, don't yeah. don't ask me that. You yeah. Know? And I got really emotional. Yeah. And uh, he says, no, I'm serious. I'm a huge Hawaiian real estate developer. And um, um, I've got some large bonuses coming. And I, uh, I finally gave him a number, and uh, not he didn't even hesitate, and he said, "Done." Wow! And cut me a check and said, "Don't pay him back." Whoa! So I opened my restaurant February twenty fifth with somebody else's blessing. Yeah. On uh, uh, February twenty fifth, two thousand seventeen, was my uh, opening day, and I was a ten to six lunch for cafe, uh, lunch ladies for cafe, or. Uh, Lunch for Ladies Cafe is what I wanted to do because yeah. my mindset thinking, you know, and trying to market what I want to bring into the restaurant was I know a lot of guys, not to say that guys don't like to eat, sure. but a lot of guys don't like to go to eat and lunch. You know, yeah. they like to get yeah. their work done. They like to do that. The women like to bring their men to lunch. So yeah. I was catering to women, which took off great. Sure. You know, it was, makes sense. That's a good, yeah. good demographic there. Right. You know, <laughs> so I was uh, uh, between the hours of 10 and 2. You know, it was uh, it was great, you know. Um, but after two, it it, it everything just um, it was slow. Yeah. Because just the demographic area was just yeah, bad. Yeah. Right. Right. So me, right before I opened this restaurant, I took a walk through, and I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do here? You know, I have a sink, I have refrigeration, I don't have any ovens. Yep. And I have a steam table. Yep. So, me, going back on what I used to do in my 39 jobs, right? <laughs> right. I remembered cooking at omelet bars. I remember oh, doing yeah. the omelet station. When yep. you go to a hotel or yeah. a resort or, you know, just a restaurant that has an omelet bar. Well, guess what they have? They've got two butane burners. <laughs> and that was all you needed for omelets. Yeah. So, me, being a very great cook, yeah. I was like, you know what? I can, I can make some breakfast. Yeah. What am I thinking? Yeah, right. You know, I mean, if I'm not seeing the people right. after 2 o'clock, why don't they try to what do something? What about before? Yeah, yeah, what if I try to do something different than try to do the lunch thing? That's smart. So I went ahead and I purchased an oven, 
you know, because um, I wanted to do some fun stuff. Yeah. And I've still got my two burners. So yeah. I put a post on my Facebook that Tibbetts at Fern Hill is now going to be offering breakfast. Yeah. And lunch. I totally remember that. Yeah. And I had to go next door because I appreciate Tony. I appreciate him giving me the opportunity to be there. And I don't want to take away from him. Yeah. But I was like, look, I'm going to do something totally different than you, yeah. than anywhere in Tacoma. Yep. You know, I'm not going to do safe food. Not yep. to say that people in Tacoma do safe food. Cause, right. You know, people, but there's a lot of safe food. There is a lot of safe food. Yeah. And a lot of there's a lot of talent in Tacoma. Yeah. Where people want to reach out and do their own thing. But sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah. People try and, you know what I mean? For me, I just got lucky at that time in life where I was to do something different. Right. You know, and the other big thing, too, is that I try to source with all the local uh, uh, local farmers, you yep. know, the uh, small businesses, you know, Healthy's Honey Hive, Wild Wheat Bakery, mm-hmm. you know, my runners that come back and forth from Storino Farms, right. you know, uh, Wild Hair, you know, um, uh, 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 Northern Fish and Blue Max, you yeah, know, I just... Yeah. Just keep it small, keep it local. Don't have a big truck pull up, you right. know. Uh, a lot of places you go, you'll see Cisco pull up, or yeah. you know, you see FSA pull up, and you know, you get some some really good vegetable, you know, trucks, you know, that pull up, but they're not local, right? They're Charlie's, yep. Which I love Charlie's. Yeah, Charlie's sure. is a great company, but it's California produce, yep. You know, and that's not local. Yeah. You know, not to knock anything, but yeah, right. You know, but some of these big restaurants can't get anything but that because right. these smaller farms can't, you know, give to demand for these big restaurants that are just right. lighting it up. You know, so us little guys have to, you know, figure out what we're going to do. You know, but I want to support small. So well, farm to table is such an interesting concept right now. I mean, that's I think that's only been around in the publicity that it's had only in the last what five or ten years. Yeah. That, it, that has really gained traction. Right. But that's really interesting that everything is sourced locally. So if you're, you know, all of your dishes, which are, you know, I've had all, pretty much all of them, you know, it's, it's really interesting to know that those are all coming locally. Um, so you've been open for a couple of years now. Going on three years. Yep. I've seen you on TV talking on the news. I've seen you doing cooking demonstrations. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've seen you on Yelp. Yeah. What's your status with Yelp right now? Uh, well, you know, uh, it's it's the folks out there that are coming in. You know, I mean, it's uh, I just have fun. You know, I mean, you got one shot. Yeah. One shot for one customer. Yep. You know, and a lot of folks, you know, they don't realize, you know, the energy that these websites totally when they produce and put you out there and they're um, giving you great reviews and all of a sudden you're getting all this attraction. Yeah. And they don't understand why. Well, it's because it's what you're doing. And yeah. If you're doing it right and you're out there and you're talking, well, your guests that are coming from wherever they're coming from yeah. are going to recognize that. And they're going to they're going to promote you. They're going to support you. Absolutely. You know, especially if you're there telling your story, you know. Now, I can't say that with with just me because, you know, you've got restaurants that the owner can't be there at all oh, times. Yeah. you got the right. server out right. there. But you know what? Train your servers. Yeah. Say, hey, how are you? What's your name? Glad you're here. Yeah. Welcome them. You know, a lot of times, you know, I'll go to a restaurant and there's it's just silence. There's nothing. There's a menu. Yeah. You know, and it's like, that's okay, you know. I mean, but if that's, you know, what you're offering, that's what you're offering. Sure. You know, I'm a little, try to be a little different, you know, yeah. not to knock anybody. Because yeah, I'm excited. Course. I'm passionate. I'm like, yeah. thank you yeah. for being here. Thank you for supporting local. Right. Thank you. And that's coming from me. Yeah, right, right, right. You know, which I know a lot of these businesses could do that. But, yeah. you know, sometimes when you get too big, you just can't. Yeah, of course. You know. Well, and th- that brings up an interesting point because a couple of weeks ago we had a conversation. I asked the question like, all right, Sean, this restaurant's rated number one in Pierce County on Yelp right now. Like, when's, when's number two going to open? And I think your answer to, to me was it's not. You know, because that was kind of your spot and that's where you wanted your focus to be. And not that you're pigeonholed into that, but, you know, it was very interesting to me because I've known a lot of chefs who they just want to build the biggest empire that they can. You're almost the inverted of that where you're focused on how do I support home? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. How, do, how do I keep it here? Right. And I just I think that's a that's such a big deal. It's yeah. such a big deal. And honestly, I see that come through your employees, too. And I, I couldn't agree more. For me, an eating experience is supposed to be exactly that. It's supposed to be an experience. This is not as much about what I taste or what I smell, but about how I feel when I'm walking out the door, right? I think that's the most important part is how do I feel while I'm there? 
And I think the ratings on Yelp are very clear that that experience is very positive from start to finish. And it isn't just the food. I mean, the food speaks for itself, but then they see the articles on the wall. They see the projects of you given back on your website and all these kind of different things that you're doing. It's, you know, there's a lot of restaurants that are very single focused and we do good food yeah. and maybe they do do yeah. good food and that's great. Um, but I view the food for you as only a, a slice of the pie, no pun intended. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, a, a lot of times, too, people will put uh, – and we'll go back to the food here. But, you know, right. the, the, the reason I do a small menu, the reason I do all that is because, as, I, as, as, as we all know, as, as restaurateurs, as cooks, as chefs, as servers, success of the business is organization, is the right. prep. Right. So if I have a million reservations, yep. I'm going to do prep. Yeah. You know, if I have 50 or 60, you know, moderate, you know, during the week, right. you know, I'm only going to prep 10 of each item. Right. Because waste is the biggest thing in the restaurants. Absolutely. You know? And a lot of people don't understand that, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, wasting one ounce of fish. Or, right. You know, this, that's that's food costs. That's, that's, that's huge. Yeah. You yeah. know, you add that up to a year. It adds up real quick. You know, you big can get numbers. You can get up to. You know, lose thirty grand. Yeah. You know, um, and that's one of my successes is because I run out of food every day. Yeah. Every day I'll do just a limited amount. Yep. You know, and if uh, people will come in and be like, "Are you closed?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm out of food." Yeah. Like, really? I'm like, "Yeah." Yeah. And and I actually am, and it's not that I want to not feed them. It's because it's one of those things where I am. I try to be as fresh as I can. Well, and you're also constantly adjusting to traffic as well. I'm right. sure you're looking back at the numbers, going, "All right, last week." At this time, we had X amount of customers. I'm going to budget for this amount. Right? No, no, no. It's day to day operations. Wow. It's, I go off reservations. Yep, yep. You know, because some days I'll have a, a twenty top in my restaurant. Yep. You know, followed by a ten top in the same day. Right. You know, and when it comes to those parties, I like to be organized, and I have those people pre order already. Yeah. So I know what they want. Yeah. So if I have twenty people coming, well, hey, here's my menu. Yep. Let's get your group together. Let's see exactly what, you know, uh, all the ladies want, you yep, know, yep. and get it back to me with allergies. Right. And that way I can make this happen. Yeah. And that doesn't cut into the other part of the food I'm making for that ten top plus right, the other customers. Right. And that's success because it's organization. Yeah. Instead of 20, of, uh, 20 people walking into a restaurant. Right. Well, everybody wants chicken fried steak. Yeah, yeah. Well, guess what? Mm-hmm. Now you got to 86 it. Yeah, that's right. You know, and and, and that's key factor in restaurants. It's, and that's such an interesting idea. I always thought, you know, because the majority of your time, you only take reservations, right? I mean, obviously, if there's an open seat, you're going to give it away, right? right? But I can't tell you how many times I've been in the restaurant and I watch somebody come in. You can see it on their face. They're super excited, but there's no seats. And right. they're like, how long do we have to wait? Yeah. And the server is going to be like, well, there's reservations out for another two hours. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. You know, make reservations. <laughs> it's, it, But that... I never viewed it as the way to kind of limit and maintain your waste. That's such an interesting concept. It's also limiting people's time. Yeah. Because if you're making reservations, see, a lot of places will just open the doors. Right. And they'll do Whoever great, comes in, fantastic. Comes in. Comes yeah. in, comes in. But when you have a line that goes all the <laughs> way down the block, yeah. guess what? Which I've seen. <laughs> well, yeah. You have to look at that and be like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Now I have to work. Yeah. Now I have to work. Where. When you come to my place, yep. if you don't have a reservation, I'm going to let you know, hey, folks, yeah. I, I can't get you in a day or, hey, right. we're looking at 25 minutes because I don't want that line down the door. That's yeah, not right, success right. to me. Yeah, That is out of control chaos. Yeah. And as a restauranter, you want controlled chaos at all times. Yeah. It'll be a mild form. Yeah, you're going to have your rushes, your people come in. It's always leave. craziness. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. the restaurant world. Yeah. But if you have balance and you have controlled chaos, yep. it's simple. And that's where the, the, the good reviews are going to keep coming in at because you can't get everybody in. I want to feed the world, but, yeah. you know, I only got five hours right. every day. Yeah, right. I don't want to be an eight-hour shift guy. Yep. I want to get everything done in eight hours yep. or five hours, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what, and that's all you need because yep. or else you're going to get tired, and then it's going to be long and drug out, and you're not going to like life. 100%. <laughs> I hear a lot of that from people in the right. restaurant it's industry because that sometimes. is how they work. Yeah. yeah. So this area obviously has had a really big impact on you. Um, what do you think has driven that impact the most? You know, obviously, you're very connected to Fern Hill. You're very connected to the Puget Sound. What what drove that? What is you know? Is there anything that sticks out to you that really says I'm here because of this reason? I'm home. Mm. I'm home. You know, I've worked in over thirty of these restaurants right. all over Tacoma. Yeah. You know, and to as a child, to uh, inspired myself. You know, to want to do big things, to give back. 
you know, back to my mom. My mom, you know, grew up on welfare. We had nothing. She was a giver. She'd give anybody anything and not expect anything. So that's where I learned that from. And I wanted to come to a place where I know could use some hope, yeah. you know, and try to do something a little differently, you know. And I just decided, you know what, if I'm ever in a position, I'm going to give back. Like we all say, you know, if we're going to win the lottery, we're going we're gonna to donate <laughs> it. Yeah. Well, yep. you know, I'm not donating, I'm doing. Yeah, that's right. You know, I'm doing. I'm actually not giving money to, you know, one cause. Right. I'm feeding people. You are the cause. Da- I am. I'm yeah. feeding people daily. I'm giving them you know, food, you know, I'm right. doing this, I'm doing bigger things than I could ever imagine. Right. You know, like for instance, our, uh, when I did, um, uh, real men were pink campaign. Yeah. You know, I ran, Oh my God. you know, yeah, I didn't know what to this. expect. This is so crazy. <laughs> but I got a hold of my friend, uh, Lamarco. Yep. He's uh, one of the big wigs. Uh, love that guy, yeah. big heart. And, uh, told him, well, Tibbetts is going to do a 24 hour event and I'm going to charge people $1. Only one dollar, yep. and you get a ham and cheese omelet, hash brown casserole, um, coffee, orange juice for a buck. Yeah, and I raised over uh, uh, three thousand dollars. Holy crap! Nice man. Yeah, three thousand dollars. That's ridiculous. Yeah, in one day. Wow. You know, and I cooked a lot of omelets. Yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> but the cool thing was, is that I had so much community support. You know, yeah. I had uh, uh, John Landberg in there. Yeah, you know, the big time executive. You know, yep. I had a bunch of my chef friends, and yeah. it was. It was fun. At 10 o'clock, I had like six chefs in my restaurant. <laughs> you know, it's completely dead. But, uh, you know, we had fun. And then we ordered, my girlfriend ordered pizza. Nice. Get this. <laughs> so the pizza guy comes. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, not to throw out Domino's, you know. I mean, but <laughs> she ordered pizza. Yeah. So pizza came, and we ordered a sausage, pepperoni, and a pepperoni. Yeah. Well, I go and lift up the sausage and pepperoni. And uh, Lord behold, there's only 12 little tiny pieces of sausage. Oh, my God. Yeah. And me being tired, you know, <laughs> I counted the sausage and I said, hey, uh, what's going on over there? Are you guys, yeah. uh, your guys' food costs getting kind of heavy up there? Because we just spent 40 you bucks. really light on sausage, sausage today? Sausage. Yeah, like- yeah. <laughs> and I know it wasn't the driver's fault. I yeah, know course, the management probably didn't know. It's yeah. probably, you know, just somebody just trying to get it done, sure. you know. Um, but I had the guy stay, and I made him a special omelet. Didn't <laughs> charge him, and I gave him sixteen pieces of ham. Nice. And a hand counted each one. Yeah. Like here you go. Uh, <laughs> sixteen pieces of ham in your little tiny omelet because you guys gave me twelve on this massive pizza. Thank That's you. Amazing. No, yeah. but you know it's a giving back. You know, yeah, but it was right. a fun story, you know. And, right. Uh, you know, plus I gave the guy a fat tip. But <laughs> sure. Um, but no, I love uh, I love Tacoma. I love everything about it. I mean, it's beautiful. You know, I mean. Um, We've got the food world here. We yeah. love about a bunch of great chefs, yeah. lots of talent, small businesses everywhere. Yeah. You know, um, I just love it here, man. It's a, it's a blessing to uh, come back home and do something and just, you know, it's uh, it's kind of neat, you know, actually. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, there's just, there is so much going on in this area. And there are a lot of really cool people doing a lot of really mm-hmm. cool things. And that's well, it's kind not of, just me. That's, that's, that's kind of where all this stemmed from, right? right? It's, you know, we wanted to tell the stories of people in the Puget Sound. Because there's a lot of interesting stories to talk about, yeah. you know. So, obviously, your restaurant has been publicly recognized. You know, I've seen, like I said before, I've seen you on the news. There's been multiple articles written about you. Um, but not just about you and the food, but a lot of it is actually sourced in your community advocacy mm-hmm. and what you do for the Fern Hill community and just Tacoma in general. And I know, you, I mean, you've got your hands in a lot of projects you know, you do your Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner for the homeless. Uh, you feed community meet and greets. Um, I've seen you do cooking demonstrations for high school students. Um, you've got a whole bunch of stuff going on. I mean, other than love for the area, is there anything that drives that mission to get back to the community? It's passion. It's yeah. all passion. You know, I mean, uh, sometimes we tend to forget about it. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll bring up to a good point here. You know, I mean, as, as a guy who's never been to culinary school, but as a line cook, you know, I have my biggest dream in front of me. You know, I had that one shot, and I'm, I'm doing the best I can every single day, you know. And not to take you to old school rap, though, but <laughs> right. look at Eminem. Yeah. You only got one shot. Yeah. You know, and, you know, not to relate myself to that, though. But, you know, I mean, if you're in that position to, to do that inspiring, give that little bit of hope, feed that person, or bring that smile to that child's face, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm all in on that, you know. I mean, as a small business, you know, a lot of places, you know, they'll open up thinking that they're going to, kill it with their product, make all this money and this and that, you know, to me, honestly, it's not about the money. Yeah. You know, once you think it's about the money as a small business, because you're not already lost, you're not going to make money your your first five years, you know? Sure. Um, But, you know, I've been blessed to just be able to do this and 
I knew that I wasn't going to be able to do it on my own. So I was like doing a bunch of reach outs. Hey, yeah. I want to go community. I want to be bigger than this because right. you know, it's not about me anymore. Yeah. I want to involve other other people, you know, and it's a, it's a blessing. Absolutely. Do you have a favorite project that you've worked on before? Like if you could work on anything, do anything, you know, you've got a lot of ideas. What do you think you would put together, right? Money's no object, time's no object. What, where, where would you be putting your attention? Uh, well, I, I, again, again, uh, for humanity, Yeah. you know, I mean, no matter what, you know, we, we can say it, no matter what project you do, what, whatever it is, you know, and, and we'll go back to the money, you know, you can't take the money with you. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you yep. know, the only thing you can take is the name that your parents gave you. So whatever you decide to do, just remember that stick to your roots, you know, yeah. remember, you know, it's, it's, yeah, you can sit there with 10 billions of dollars in your bank. Right. Is that going to make you happy? Yeah. No, a lot of people I, think it will. I'd rather be where I'm at right now. Dirt poor. Yeah. You know, with a community of love yeah. and showing that love back. Like when people come to my restaurant and pay to eat there, right? well, I'm taking that money and I'm giving it right back. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that's just showing something totally different. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not here rolling in. Right. You know, no, because it's not about that to me. It's no Lamborghini out front. No. <laughs> and there, nor would there be. And, that. That, and, and the success isn't me. I'm not right. successful. It's the people. Yeah. It's you folks out there that right. support folks that, you know, have hearts that want to do the right thing when these situations come up. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I can make the, the, the greatest product in the world. Right. You probably won't buy it. Well, look, I'm not successful. Why? Right. Because I'm not doing nothing with yeah. it. It's just sitting there. Yep. Yep. Now, when you give that to somebody and you make a million of them and you give it to somebody, yeah. that's where you get the success. I've always viewed business as a platform, a soapbox, so to speak, to give back. Mm-hmm. Um, there are so many needs out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so many things that can actually move the needle to make this a better place. And I think there's a lot of people that would relate to this, but I firmly agree that we should leave this place better than when we came into it. Right. And, and train our youth, you know, train them yeah. to, 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 to do that, you yeah. know, and that's where it's at. Not just, you know, hold all the secrets to yourself. And, right. you know, it's like when somebody wants a recipe, yeah, here, yeah, here it is. Yep. You know, yep. what am I going to do with it? Yeah. What am I going to patent it? Hey, right. No, it's mine. It's <laughs> right. mine. You know, absolutely. <laughs> well, absolutely. humbug, you know. Yeah, right, Come right. Yep. Teach them, you know, as, as, a, as a chef, my chef told me, you know, a chef is to teach. Mm. And, you know, as, as, a, as a teacher, you should be teaching that person to do your job, just like in any job. Yeah. A manager. Manager should be teaching that server to do their job. Yeah. Manager should be teaching that dishwasher to do their job. Yeah. And that way everybody knows the job. We're all equal. But in this day and age, everybody wants a job title. Yeah. Too fast. Yep. You know, me, I, I don't care about any of it. Right. I'll be a dishwasher till I'm gone. Yep. You know, because I'm, I'm proud of that. You know, you need me to wash dishes? I'll go wash dishes. Yeah. You know, you got to lose that. There's you, there's so much ego wrapped up in, in that industry, I think, in general. Right. And I would probably argue it's in every industry. But right. it is. I, I, I see it a lot there specifically because it's a very unique skill set, a very unique talent to be able to put flavors together in a way that I feel like I'm on a roller coaster. Right. right? It's just such a unique thing. So... You know, for the people that are out there that have a passion for food and have a passion for, you know, giving back, but really don't know where to start. uh, I think there's two very clear paths. You can always go classically trained. Uh, But I really I'm intrigued by your route. Is that something that you would recommend to somebody else who wants to get into this culinary game of just shotgunning as many different places as possible? Well, to a point you can, you know, like I said, I came into a, a time where I, I don't know if it just fell into place or, sure. or whatever, you know, um, but um, it's you, you know, if you're going to open something, open it for you, yeah. you know, be passionate about it, you know, like everybody tells you to own it or uh, what's the, what's the word everybody's using now? Be accountable. Oh, sure. Accountability, you know, yeah. own it. You know, if you make a mistake, you know, um, um, take care of it. You know, it's like, for instance, you know, I mean, here, here's a situation I had at the uh, restaurant. You know, I was working last week, um, you know, uh, glass broke on a table. You mm-hmm. know, it happens. Rest yep, on the, yep. Well, one of the glass shards fell into a four tops table. Oof. You know, and I saw the glass shard. Yeah. I didn't hesitate. Yeah. Took their meal away. Yep, yep. Going to make you folks four more. Yeah. On the house. Yeah. The yep. whole thing. Yep. Because it's the experience, and that's accountability. Yeah, that's right. I didn't offer them a free piece of pie. <laughs> right. I didn't say, hey, I'll give you 10% off. Right. No, I took care of the whole bill. Yeah. You know, because that's accountability absolutely and that is how you build a customer base mm. you do the right thing yeah 
Yeah. You know, because that ruins the whole meal. Yeah. You know, and they left a $70 tip. Oh, nice. So if you if you don't know how to work that, right. call me. What's the difference between working 40 jobs, working 40 different <coughs> restaurants, and starting your own? Obviously, you have a lot more equity in the game, right? Were you ever afraid of it not working? You know, there was a time um, before I was 40. Mm. Um, 2012. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm 40. So yeah, about 2012. Um, I moved to Moses Lake. I took a leap of faith and um, was working down there. No, it was Montana. Yeah. Moved to Montana. was working down there. I uh, worked down there for about uh, this job I got a week later when I got there. Um, and it, it was kind of different down there. They don't have a health department. Moses Lake is an interesting place. <laughs> yeah, they don't, they don't have a uh, – well, no, Mo- Montana, Billings. Oh, Montana. Montana. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they didn't have a um, – sorry, I was – the M thing. Um, <laughs> That's all good. They didn't have a health department down there. In Billings? And Montana does not have a health department. They I have not have thought that. Serve safe. Yeah. So all these guys were cooling all these big containers full of liquid and oh putting gosh. caps on them. Yeah. I'm not talking about it, though, you know. It, right. <laughs> But I go in there, you know, being from Tacoma, You're right. being taught, you know, by, a, you know, a tons of different talent, you know, because right. Tacoma has talent. Yeah. Um, anyways, I was running both their restaurants within two months. Whoa. And that's what got it started for me. Holy crap. Yeah. That's big. So then I came back here in Arista. Yep. So that's when I knew that, yeah. that I was ready. Yeah. And you know, I was like, I'm ready. I'm going home. Yeah. You know, I, think, I think I'm ready for this. And then I, you know, got offered that. Um, took a took that leap of faith and you just never know you know yeah um a lot of people want to go big they want to open 100 seaters right 200 seaters because they're thinking all this money right but it's not about the money yeah you know priorities were wrong to begin with right it's about start off small establish something first yep then open another yeah and then you can expand never no never expand never expand never expand you'll fail when you expand interesting Keep that one small. Always have one small. Yep. Then open another. Yeah. Never expand because if you look around, look around Tacoma. Yeah. Look at the restaurants that have expanded. Look at the wait times. Yeah, look at their yeah. reviews. Look at what sure. is going on in Tacoma. Yep. You know, one place had a line all the way out the door. Right. Now there's no line. Yeah. Yeah. That's you interesting. Know. So if you were to open another restaurant, would it be the same? Would it be Tibbetts at Fern Hill too, or would it be a completely new concept? Well, honestly, next year I am opening a second restaurant. Nice. Okay. It's going to be called Tibbetts Dinner House. Oh. Yeah, because you only do dinner, what, twice a week now? Twice. Well, no, I only do dinner on private parties now. I'm oh, in gotcha. my private okay. party mode. But um, so, so before you were doing the – you were doing a – Thursdays and Thursdays. Crab boil, Tuesday nights, prime rib, Thursdays. Oh, yeah, and I've been to the prime rib nights, man. Oof. So as soon as uh, this goes into play, I've got seven locations. Yep. They're not in the prime areas. They're in the outskirts because sure. I don't want to be in the uh, – don't want to say it, folks. I don't want to be in the high rent areas because <laughs> we know where those are. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm all and, about it. And uh, <laughs> you know, small business doesn't make it in right. high rent area. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, even when we, but you know, I'm, I'm getting, uh, I'm having a lot of fun. You know, my name's yeah. getting out there. You know, yeah. uh, bigger than ever. And you know, you just got to stay humble and uh, yep. just, just, just keep going. And um, it will open. You know, I've already uh, got everything figured out. It's amazing. I'm not going to do it on the podcast. I'm not going right. to tell you all about it. <laughs> I was hoping we were going to get the uh, the inside scoop. No, but it'll be uh, five days a week, and it'll be two seatings daily. So. Nice. That's awesome. It'll be fun. Yeah, yeah that's so awesome. Once I get more into it, uh, I'll talk to you more about it yeah, uh, sure. after the first of the year. Yeah, sure. Uh, once I get ready. But, yeah, number two is coming. And then that's I'll exciting. serve at Tibbetts at Fern Hill in the daytime. Yeah. And I will serve... At Tibbetts Turn House on that time. You're going to be busy, man. I'll hire That's a chef exciting. over there. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Anything else on your horizon? Any other projects that are coming up? No, just uh, just trying to, to support who I can. And like I said, you know, it's it's not about me anymore. It's uh, yeah. I want to give love to the people now. You know, yeah. it's about them. It's about their hearts. It's about, uh, you know, um, it's about them. You yeah. know, uh, a lot of people want to be, you know, um, in those positions that that we get into and sometimes it's hard with kids with right. jobs with you know um certain setbacks you know um like i said i was just blessed to uh uh come into what i came into through yeah. uh, other people's blessings and you know if that ever happens to you and you see it you take that leap of faith you just never know you know follow your dream you know i mean 
don't give up. Yeah. I didn't open my restaurant until 43 years old. Right. You know, and I have no medical, no dental. You know, right, I'm not right, one of those right. guys that sitting on 401k. I have nothing. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, and, you know, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's never about the money. Yeah. Never about the money. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's what's making me, you know, me. It's, it's the people, you know. If you had a message that you could give to our audience, inspiration, what would you want to tell them? Try to meet everybody you can. Say hello to everybody you can, you know, with a smile. You know, we have a lot of uh, uh, times where we're shy, we're bashful, but you never know who you're going to meet. You never mm-hmm. know when that person is going to be, you know, the one that you give that hope to, that inspires you, that gives back to somebody else. You know, not to say the movie Pay It Forward. Of course. But it, it feels good, you know. Um, do the right thing, you know. Um I'm, uh, I'm just doing the best I can, you know. I mean, I'm not perfect in any way. You know, right. I, I don't plan on ever to be perfect. But, Preach, brother. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's when you're, when, when, when you're in a, a spot to bless others in, you know, keep it going. Right. You know, just, just a warm handshake or a smile, you know, yeah. make somebody's day and let people know that they're special. It, it's so amazing. And, I, you know, I obviously talk to a lot of entrepreneurs and people who have been doing business for a long time. And they share a very similar mentality of... Our focus is not on what we can take and putting ourselves in a position where we can be given to, but it's actually quite the opposite. It's we focus our attention on how we can give back or how we can give more value than anybody else. And that's the only thing that matters. Yep. That's crazy. That's so true, though. It is. So true. Well, Sean, I am very excited for your next project. Uh, if you're interested in reaching out to Sean, want to check out the website or the restaurant, we're going to put all of his information in the description below. Uh, Sean, where are you at social media wise? You on Facebook, Twitter? I have one, uh, you know, I'm a Lord of the Rings fan just because nice. I'm short. I could be a hobbit. <laughs> I shaved my feet. Um, <laughs> one line, it's uh, Tibbetts Fern Hill um, all over the page. So Facebook's Tibbetts Fern Hill, Tibbetts Fern Hill for, uh, dot com for uh, the website and yep. Tibbetts uh, Fern Hill for my Instagram. And those are the only three I use. So, um, those are big ones, though. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of places want me to invest in them, yeah, invest in marketing, and we can yeah. get you more business. You know, that's the other thing. Don't invest in anything. Don't do the Yelps. Yeah. Don't do the Googles. Don't yep. pay anything. I've learned that the hard way, too. You know, word yeah. of mouth, word of mouth, and just be you, you know, and, and just do random, fun, quirky stuff, you know. Like uh, today, you know, I did something out of the ordinary, you know, and I'll tell you this story as we end. Yeah. Uh, another restaurant. You know, I like to uh, follow other restaurants and see what's going on. Yeah. And uh, a couple days ago, I think it was Sunday, I uh, saw a file at another restaurant in Tacoma. It was bamboo mm. in Tacoma. And it looked like somebody stole the tip jar. Oh, um, and it, it, it saddened me to see that, you know, um, without negative, you can't have positive. We know that. That goes for reviews, too. If you get one star reviews, yeah. let them go. Because yep. you're going to have negative to get yeah. the positive. Remember that. You can't please everybody. But it hurt my feelings, you know, to know that somebody would just take that tip jar. And I felt bad for that young man that had to steal that money. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm sure there's there's uh, one of us that would have helped that guy buy something to eat or whatever he's hurting yeah, for. Yeah. But anyways, the fact of the matter is he stole from those employees, you right. know, um, which saddened me. So um, today I just, you know, was in the area. It was on my mind, you know, when I was driving by. I said, oh, yeah, bamboo. So I just went in there and I put put a tip in. Nice. You know, and nice. they asked, what are you doing? I was like, I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I watched your guys' Facebook. I just yeah. want to leave a tip. Well, they were so touched by that that they took a picture of me. And, That's awesome. Um, the owner uh, messaged me, and it was, it was a, it was a, it was a good conversation. That's really awesome. Um, yeah. So following that, the uh, the owner of Bamboo, which are really awesome people, I can't wait to meet them in person. Um, said that they'd love to help future endeavors for uh, for the feeds I do. Nice. Yeah. You know, which is another restaurant reaching out, which is it's just another person plugging into your system you know, and I, give back. I, I, I was just going in there to help those employees because yeah. they're all young kids yeah, from what I yeah, heard, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, that's loss of hope. It's like somebody took the money for them for the day, yeah. you know, and these are, yeah. these are our children, Yeah. you know, so I just went in there and just, here you go. That's so huge. You know, that's and, so huge. but that's just things that the, 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 the stuff that people don't do that can do it, that are empowered to do it. But, you know, we live in a, don't want to use the word. We live right. in a very material sick world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, once you let all that go, you're good. You said something else that perked my attention too. You know, talking about authenticity, 
and really being focused on you. I think as a society, we're so bred to be afraid of failure. Mm-hmm. And I can't tell you how many people I come across that they have an amazing idea that really could go the distance, but they're so afraid of what other people are going to think or what happens if I do this for a year and it doesn't work and I have to come back and get a job. You know, I can see it plague their mind. Right. It's amazing. Yeah. So to be your authentic self means you don't care about other people and or not about other people, but what they think, mm-hmm. like the judgment that they have to give doesn't hit. Right. And I've known other people and I feel like I'm one of those too, where I, I felt that way in the beginning. Mm-hmm. I was afraid to fail because I was going to come back and they were going to be the ones to say, James, I told you building that business was a bad idea and see, I was right. And I was so afraid of facing that situation that I did make decisions that led me down the path of not executing an idea that I had. And who knows where that could have gone. I got a small story, quick All story right, yeah, for yeah, let's it. do it. So when I first opened, okay, first opened, um, I knew nothing about business. Sure. I'm a cook. Yeah. Cooks don't know business. You're right. <laughs> Cooks just cook. They cook the best food they can make. And yeah. hey, high five. Right. High five. <laughs> high five. You like it? Yay, yay, yay. Um, so one of the big things that I did when I first opened uh, from this other gentleman's blessing is I did a one of my major givebacks. Yeah. It was uh, within the first five months I opened yeah. on Mother's Day. Nice. Mother's Day. You know, Very I did appropriate. A, did yeah. a big blast on Facebook. Yeah. You know, I felt that, you know, it was time. So yeah. I did uh, uh, some blasts on social media, yeah. inviting folks to come to my restaurant and eat for free. Yeah. You know, this was my first one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I spent about twenty five hundred dollars out of my bank account. Yeah, you know, which I still spend about that out of my bank right. account. Well, I'm not poor <laughs> right. now, but because uh, <laughs> I'm not a nonprofit. Right. I'm not that guy that's looking to get it back. Yeah. Right. Right. Where a lot of places are. No offense to the nonprofits. I love what you guys do. Of course. But I'm just that guy that just doesn't because yeah. it's you know. It's not about the money. It's not about the money. Um, so I did that. I fed these. I fed about eighty people. Wow. It was awesome. Really good spread, good yeah. food, you know. Uh, these less fortunate families that couldn't afford to go out and spend the 50, 40 yeah. bucks that, you know, these these higher end restaurants charge just to yeah. make their bills. Because yeah. I know they have to charge that oh, to make yeah. their bills. Yeah. Well, as a little guy, I don't. I Low overhead. Low overhead. So I did that. I had, after I was done, I think I had like, I put the blast on there and then I started getting people yeah. messaging, what are you doing? Right. Why what are you doing this? Yeah. You're not going to make it. You're going to fail. Whoa. Why are you giving people free food? That's aggressive. Yeah. And these are these are my friends telling me this. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, it's not out of hate. It's like sure. they're worried about me. Sure. It's like, dude, you just opened up. You can't yeah. do that. You. I was like, no, no, yeah. I'm a giver. Yeah. It feels right. Yep. You know, I live in his abundance every day. You yeah, know, it's yeah. like. If I'm in a position that I feel I can give, I'm going to do it, and yeah. I'm not holding back. If I failed and I did the best shot I could, you know, and that's how I feel every day. Yeah. I got my first letter from the DOR, DOR a week later. I had no idea who the DOR was. <laughs> right. Who's, who's, I had to call my accountant. Hey, yeah. I got a letter here. Uh, certified. <laughs> uh, it says Department of Revenue. Yes. What's, what's what, that? What's that? <laughs> Serious. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, my account's like, well. You're definitely not a businessman, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're a lot better now. <laughs> <laughs> she starts laughing. It's like, you didn't pay him? I was like, pay oh, who? Oh, no. She's like, well, how much money do you have in your bank? And I'm like, $200. Oh, my God. 230 something. And this yeah. is after five months after I'd been open. Right. Because I had no clue. I was on quarterlies. Yep, yep, yep. You know? Um, then that's when I went over to Tony yeah. and switched to breakfast. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I had to think of something. I was like, Tony, can I do breakfast? Please? Right. Right. You know? Right. Right. Um, but I built that menu Yeah. and the following menu, uh, or, and after that, yeah. Record breaking numbers. That's amazing. And it's been reservations Packed required every time. Every I'm time. In there. Yeah. You know, so, um, take that leap of faith. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Even when your friends doubt you or you're getting that negative family, stuff. Family, especially. Family. Yeah. And yeah. so what are you doing? You can't do this. You're yeah. going to fail as a business. No. Yeah. No, stand your ground. Take that leap of faith. Because once the community and once people see what you do, yeah, their hearts open up. I think this also comes down to dying on your own sword, right? If you truly, and I mean truly believe in something, you should be willing to die on that sword. Right. This has nothing to do with anybody else. No. This is about I believe in something and I believe in the plan that I built, right? That's really what it has to be. Now, if I just have an idea pop in my head and I execute without planning... 
you know, we're probably going to have a different conversation. Right. But to be so willing, and this is true, I think, even if you're in a job, right? If you work for somebody else, we're not even talking about owning your own company here. Mm-hmm. If you work for somebody else and you have an idea that you think is going to be successful, go die on that sword. Right. And it's just going to feel a lot better, I think. Yeah. You know, you, you feel a lot more equity into it. Mm-hmm. And if it works, who? Yeah. Everybody else is like, I don't know about this. Right. Right. Yeah. But I, I, I do think it's especially true when you're an entrepreneur. Like you need to 200 percent believe in what it is that you're doing or you're it's just not going to work. Right. But, yeah. you know, to take the criticism and the and the praise, I think it, it really does go both ways. Mm-hmm. Because if you take too much criticism and you really let that affect you, you're just not going to have a good time. It doesn't become fun anymore. No. Um, but I think the same goes the other way, that if you get high on your own supply of people yep. telling you that you're awesome, that brings you downhill, too. Yeah, it, right? it does. It does. It's, I mean, you see it all the balance. time. Yeah. You see it all the time. You yeah. know, you, you just can't. You, you, you know, I mean, there's sometimes, I mean, we all get that way. Every once in a while, every one of us gets, gets yeah. non-humble. But yeah, yeah. You, gotta, you just got to take a deep breath and yeah. be like, oh, wait, I'm going steering away, you know, and. Um, but yeah, on that note though, this is going to be my 18th feed this Thursday, 18th one, 18th. How many people do you think you're going to have? I'll have 300. So I feed <laughs> thousands of people for free a year. Yeah. Thousands. Yeah. Yep. And I'm not a nonprofit man. Right. You know, I don't write right. it off. I don't, you know, and it's yep. not saying that, that I'm better than anybody because, you sure. know, I, I, I don't have any overhead. It's what I want. It's what makes me feel good. Yeah, that's right. Just like these, these millionaires, billionaires, these guys with money love to donate yeah. to their special things. I love that they do that. Yep. I love to see that. Yeah. Or me, I love to give my time and, and, and cook Absolutely. and be there and be a part of it and see the it smiles. Makes, it makes such a big difference. And the smiles is a big piece, I man. Yeah. I mean, sit in your restaurant and watch people eat like yeah. no people love yeah. it and when i come out with a big huge <laughs> they're like what is that <laughs> i you I, ordered it i i really do love as you you know as the plates come out they kind of do get paraded around mm-hmm. the restaurant a little bit and mm-hmm. you know that's generally how i pick what i'm gonna eat next it's, oh that looks amazing you got these towers what was the spiced pumpkin french toast you uh, did? salted caramel that's what it was pumpkin yeah, yeah, french yeah. toast yeah, yeah. God, that's going that's away good. next month i'm sad I gotta yeah. make something bigger. Speaking of which, uh, you change your your menu. Like the full menu gets changed every quarter. Uh, every season. Every season. Uh, not the full menu. I mean, my lunch. Everything changes. Yeah, yeah. You know, on lunch, um, breakfast. I'm, I got my stapled item. The right. The meat and gravy bomb. Oh yeah, that's which so good. is uh, that's my spin on biscuits and gravy. Yeah. And then now I have my lobster bomb. That's that really a too. big hitter too. That one's um, really good. Buzzfeed, uh, the biggest social media. Yeah. Um, marketer in the world yep. gave me number one in the states Whoa. number one restaurant holy crap with the lobster bomb so yeah i'm worldwide now which that which literally was is awesome. a bomb dish and yeah, it's super good i have an email there in july yeah no it was it might have been no it was last month yeah i had a hundred and eleven thousand views to my page <laughs> and i only have 24 seats that's amazing hundred and eleven thousand views you're in a tiny little community in tacoma right. I mean, fern hill is small yeah. you know that's who, amazing in one month who gets a hundred and eleven thousand views on a web page nobody i know nobody not I know like anybody. that yeah me not like that all right well let's leave the audience with this one thing you've been cooking for a long time you've made a lot of dishes now for your own restaurant i'm going to open up to everything I want to know what is your favorite dish. Maybe not one that you make. It probably will be. But if you could pick any dish that you've had in your whole life that just really connected with you the most, what is that? I'm going to be honest with you. And what I tell everybody that comes in my restaurant, it's the water. Oh, yeah. The water. It's free. <laughs> it's got all the vitamins. Yep. And you can chew on it. Because <laughs> those cucumbers, once you start chewing, you don't stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, when it comes to food, you know... Um, as I tell people, my menu's a guide. You know, I can tell you what my favorite is, but sure. a lot of people have their own allergies and their yeah, own taste sure, palates. Sure, sure. You know, I'm not going to win every crowd. I'm with just the talking flavors. about you. Just about you. Like, what connected with you the most? My kitchen. Mm. Two burners in an oven. Yeah, right. I've accomplished the impossible. No kidding, man. And I'm proud. Or I definitely need to link a picture of that kitchen so everybody and, can see that. And I'm proud. Yeah, there's... Every time I see that, I'm like, there's no way he makes this five-star food in that tiny little yep. restaurant. Like, it's like not even a quarter of the size of the studio, you know? It's, no, it's, it's not. It's I mean, sick. it's like here to there. There yeah, it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I don't it's have amazing. one. I don't have one, James, and I'm being honest with you. I do not have a favorite dish. Yeah. I mean, they're all fun. They're all... Sure. They're all... They're all staple of tippets. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, 
Can't recommend uh, Tibbetts at Fern Hill enough. Sean, thank you so much for coming in for the podcast today and sharing your story uh, about how you grew up in the Puget Sound and what you've been doing with the restaurant and giving back to the community. Uh, I personally look forward to helping you get back and continuing to do all the things that you're going to do. And I cannot wait to see your next restaurant. All, all those things. Yeah. So is that your logo there? That is the Puget Sound Underground logo. Well, thank you, James at Puget Sound <laughs> Underground. I was going to ask you that. Yeah, I just keep forgetting. I look over there thanks, and I'm man. like, uh, we're in your house. So yeah, this is right. kind of cool. Like, well, what's, what, what happens in this room? Yeah, right. right. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Yeah, it is, man. Thanks. <laughs> so thanks for having me, though. Man. Real honor, real pleasure, dude. Uh, thanks, I'm man. glad you made time. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Thank and, you. you know, let's, uh, let's meet back here in a year and see how far you've gone, man. I'm, yeah. I'm excited to see where you go. Well, I'm hoping I'm... Going this way, yeah, not no this kidding. way. Yeah, you and me both. I want to go this way. I gotta go hit the, the camera's watching me. I gotta go this yeah. way, not this way, because <laughs> I'm not going this way anytime soon. No kidding. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey, have a great night. Thanks, James. All Appreciate right, it. See ya.